Welcome to part four of the Bitcoin Miner Hydrofall Reservoir build in which I do all the final details and complete the unit. I want to show you what we've been up to down here in the shop. Me and the mouse in my pocket, we've been very busy. So here's the unit. This part is ready for running through the router and putting chamfers on these uprights and polishing those and basically it's done. It needs to be cleaned. I'll rinse it out real good, get all the dust out of it uh, from all my sanding and buffing and everything. Now, a real tricky part is making the lid that fits into it. The lid it has a step. I'm going to route a step into it so it fits tight on the inside, tight to the outside, and just fits flush. So in my usual fashion, we'll just do this live raw, like I always do. The reason I've got masking tape on this flake board is this double stick tape doesn't stick to that flake board very well at all. So I sprayed it with 3M adhesive and then I stuck uh, this yummy stuff down. Lovely yellow masking tape, which is pretty darn sticky. And then I sanded this a little bit to make it really dull so that the tape would stick even better to it. Slide off because, I, like I said, I got one shot at this. Don't have any chances to redo it. I don't have another piece of this material. I've used up every little bit I've got. Which is why I was so particular with my cut list and all these other little things I was doing to be very efficient with my use of material. So there will be no problems. It was one of those projects where if I screwed anything up, I would have been very upset because I would have had to wait another week for material and I would have been out of pocket. Basically all the money I would make <laughs> from doing this. So, here we go. What I'm using these little guides is to help me get this darn thing in exactly the right place because I can't eyeball it. I've only got the, the tiniest margin all the way around and so I can't eyeball it. It has to be sort of put right in place against the form. That's stuck down real good. This should be ready for the router now. Okay, I want to warn you before I get started, it gets loud. Okay, so Turn your speakers down or take your headphones off or whatever because it's about to get hairy. Very, very hairy.
that's the first pass. And I've got basically a sixteenth. I want to get three sixteenths. I'm going a sixteenth at a time because it'll give me a really, really clean cut. So I'll do this two more times and I'll show you the results. All right, let me show you the results of uh, using that beautiful brand new Freud router bit. Look at that. That is so nice. That is just a beautiful thing. So what I need to do now is pop it off of there. I'll show you that. This is always a little tricky too. Everything's tricky with these builds. There's nothing easy. I just don't want to damage anything. I just got to get that to pop off. I've got my tape to stick well a little bit too good, huh? Something's giving. I'm not sure what. What? Oh. This tape. I think it's tape on this thing. This is a real bear to open up. All right. Got it. Okay. Get rid of that. Need that. Hopefully, we won't need this blue tape much longer. But we'll leave it in there. I don't think it's causing any problems. Let's see if it fits. Like a glove. Perfect. Very, very tight. I think it's so tight that it might actually stay on there when it's upside down. Not quite. But it definitely does not rattle around. There's no play, no shake. Just fits, which is all I wanted. I think it'll fit both ways. Yep, so it's not specific. It can be put on either way. That's awesome. All right, now it's time to route that flush. Okay, this gets loud, like I said before, so turn your speakers down or whatever. Okay, we're going to trim this off. I've got the top just sitting inside the box, so that's it. That's what's guiding it. This is the final profiling. Once this is done, I'll just polish up the edges and this this will be ready. It's a beautiful thing. Let's hope nothing bad happens.
at what we did. You helped. You guys have been a great help. Now clean my damn shop. Yeah, buddy. I'm just going to rub that down with uh, 400. Get all the little routery marks out of it. And then buff it. I've been spending a little time on the buffing wheel. And I've got one side buffed out. This side's buffed out. Now I'm working on this side. Now I'll just show you, this is really... To me, I know there's a lot of scary tools in the shop, like big giant garter bits that you take your finger off, but this freaking thing scares the crap out of me right at the end of the job because it can just snatch the work and then that's it. Fling it out of your hands and smash it into a million pieces. So, or at least two or three pieces. Too many pieces. More pieces than I needed to do that. Too many. So, I'm just going to work on this side. It takes a long time, guys. I go back and forth, back and forth on every surface. I go in, every, I go in all these different directions to blend the scratches and to melt the surface with the heat of the buffing wheel and to use the rouge as a mild abrasive to level out everything. And it has wax in there that if you go with a light touch at the very end, it leaves a nice polish. So a lot of work. I'm getting some progress, man. I'm really getting excited. This will be the end. And then I get to test it, see how it looks, how it runs, and then I pack it up and ship it off. What more could you ask? These reservoirs are so intense and require so much labor. I stopped making them for a while because they were stressing me out. Especially if I had to make five or six of them for people that were waiting. Because, you know, I don't want to rush on anybody's reservoir and that leaves everybody else hanging. So. But when I reopened the shop, I made a, a just sort of a statement to myself that I wouldn't turn anything down. Anybody that asked me to do something that's within my field of knowledge that I could accomplish, I would take it off. Getting real close to having this space done. You can feel how it's grabbing it. You gotta go with a super light pressure or you'll melt it just right into the plastic and destroy your whole profile. There's so many ways the buffing wheel can mess you up. It's ridiculous. It's not a friendly tool. Even though I call my buffing wheel fluffy, you gotta name all your tools, right? Nippy, fluffy, dusty, noisy, like the dwarves. Alright. We're getting there, man. Well, I'm gonna save you guys from falling asleep watching this. I will get back to you. I know. After all we've been through, all you guys have watched me do and everything else, this is the final product. That looks pretty tattered, doesn't it? It looks like it's been around the block a few times. <laughs> hey, what's with the paper box, man? <laughs> I'm leaving the paper on it. It's shipping with paper, so get over it. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm going to clean it out real good, fill it full of water, test it, dry it out, pack it up, ship it out. I'm not putting any water in it for another day though. I'm going to let the, all the glue and everything have a really long time to dry it. 72 hours. This is maximum cure time. That's when it reaches its strength pretty much. It actually cures over almost a week, but uh, it'll cure in 72 hours to 80% strength. So even though the lid can go both ways, it fits much, much nicer this way, I think. <coughs> it's got beautiful polished chamfered edges optically clear on all four corners that is really sexy it's got a rebated top out of one piece of material so it'll be perfect to look through optically clear and look at it from the top side back bottom put it on a glass table people can get underneath there look up into it look at those beautiful chamfers man I love that stuff it's like little prisms almost 
Yes, everything that can be polished has been polished. Uh, just needs to be cleaned down, rinsed out, filled full of water, given a good long leak test, and then uh, off it goes to my customer in the UK. Thanks for hanging out for such a long video, guys. You guys are awesome. I appreciate everybody's support with your comments, likes, subscriptions, and, of course, orders for custom goods like this.